What's good, everybody? I promised you this video this sometime this week, and I'm promising you right now. This is my NFL 2014, I should say, 15. We're gonna get technical because the playoffs obviously start early 2015, but nonetheless, uh, it's 2014 NFL uh, preview predictions, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, so I'm not gonna go way too far into like some people saying, "Oh, I think so and so is gonna make the playoffs." You know, like like break it down. You know what I mean? Like to like a playoff bracket. Like, oh, so and so will like let so say for example, oh, the Patriots and the Broncos are a first round bond. So then I'll be you know I'm not gonna be too technical because that video will take forever. But I'm just gonna go by each uh, conference, each division, each conference, and just tell you what I think about each individually, which team, what they, what I think they're gonna do, what they think they're not gonna do. Uh, how bad their off season's been, how good their off season's been. I know we still got training camp and whatnot. Injuries can happen at any time. Understand that. So you know, if all of a sudden, let's just say hypothetically speaking, uh, freaking Peyton Manning breaks his neck in preseason, and the Broncos' chance to make the playoffs are pretty slim. <laughs> you know, let's just say that happens. You know, so again, you look at the day. It's officially July 30th, 2014, that I'm recording this and that I'm going to post this. So before anyone says, oh, you were wrong about it, look at the date, okay? Thank you. So anyways, let's move on to the AFC East. Uh, we got my New England Patriots, of course. Uh, I think the Patriots, I'm biased opinion here, I think they will win the division again. Um, it's going to be different, though, because this team actually did get better. You look at the additions of Brandon Browner. You look at the additions of Darrell Rivas. Uh, their defense has gotten better. They got Vince Wilfork. I know he's older, but uh, he's coming off an injury, so you know where I left him for most of the season. So the defense itself looks okay, a little bit better than last year, but the offense obviously is a big question mark. Tom Brady didn't have his best season last year. And you got Danny Mandela, who actually played better in more games than I thought he would. Julian Edelman really stepped up. Aaron Dobson, oh my god. This, this guy is just, you throw this ball four times to him, he's going to drop it three, three out of those four times. And I, don't, I don't understand that, you know, it's so like, everyone says, oh, Aaron Dobson has so much potential, you know, especially since he didn't get drafted, you know. And then Ken, Kemper Tompkins, that's, he's, enough, he's a guy that, that does have playmaking ability, he's a guy that can't explode at any minute. Hopefully, him having one year under his belt in the NFL will help them succeed and whatnot. And, of course, the other big question mark is, you know, kind of like who's the running back, per se, because I think the thing is this year, more than ever, it feels like to me personally, there's a lot more running back by committee kind of teams. You know, you got the Jets, you got the Patriots, you look at, you know, unless you have, like, an Adrian Peterson on your team, for example, you're going to have a running back by committee. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you look at Rob Gurkowski, you know, one of the top star players, not just in this game, but I honestly believe in the NFL, too. You know, top tight ends by far. And, um, I just can't trust Rob Gurkowski. For anyone who's ever talked to me on Skype, I've always said, trade his ass, trade him, trade him, trade him, trade him. I'm trying to say, you're crazy. Why would you trade Rob Gurkowski? You're crazy. I dare you. For a guy that's getting paid that much money, and I know Rob Gurkowski has a lot of the great, talented tight ends. But the guy cannot stay healthy year after year. To me, he's sort of like, in NBA terms, the NFL version of Derrick Rose. He's a great player, but the guy cannot stay healthy. So it's just like, trade this guy for maybe a top pick in the draft, and let's see how that goes. Or something. Trade him for, I don't care. Trade him for a box of cookies. I don't care. I will not let you take a bet. You know, it's just... You know, you get a, a reliable tight end. You know, I'm looking at the Patriots, but they've done this offseason at tight ends. All these guys I'm looking at, I'm going, who the hell are you? <laughs> you know, I seriously have no idea who they are. But anyways, so that's the thing with the Patriots. The Dolphins, the Dolphins are going to be garbage. I'm sorry, the Dolphins are going to suck. I'm sorry if you're a Dolphins fan, but you guys are going to blow this year. All right, Nushan Moreno is basically done for the year. And all he did was, like, take one snap. He's like, oh, my body. You know, Ryan Tannehill is a horrible quarterback. I'm sorry. When, and then, the, you know, people say, oh, the Patriots wide receiver core, they got nobody. Look at the Dolphins. 
With freaking Brian Hart Williams, your number one wide receiver, there's something wrong, especially when you spend all that money on Mike Wallace, by the way. And then you look at that defense, oh, we got Quentin Finnegan, who freaking sucks now because he's getting older and he can't cover for Sprott. I mean, that, that Dolphins team is just bad. Like, they're ugh. top picks in the draft. Miami right? Dolphins, look out. The New York Jets now, I've always trashed the Jets because I've always said that they're kind of like, America's joke of a team for the NFL because of how much hype they get. But with that being said, um, they're a better team this year. You know, I'm not going to lie. I think Geno Smith's going to do a bit better than he did last year. I am, yeah, Michael Vick, obviously. But to me, when Michael Vick's your number two, but, number two excuse me, quarterback, you know, he's a guy that's been long history of getting injured. It's like, um, you better get the number three quarterback for a warmed up zone. That's another team, like I said, that has a running back by community. I honestly believe Chris Ivory is the best option there, but I know a lot of people like, you know, what, I forget who else they have. They'll say Mike Goodson, but I could have sworn they freaking cut him. So uh, so that's what the Jets. The defense, it's Rex Ryan's defense. Rex Ryan's defense is always going to be good. I mean, Rex Ryan's kind of like, you guys are good when it comes to defense. And the offense is like, what's this? But with that being said, so, and look at the Rex, I guess. Mark Sanchez is no longer on the freaking Jets. There you go. So then you move on to the Buffalo Bills. And honestly, on paper, I honestly thought the Buffalo Bills would be the biggest threat for the Patriots in the AFC East. But with Kiko Alonso's injury, he kind of just flattened things a little bit. You know, C.J. Spiller, I think, let's face it, he had a disappointing season last year. Fred Jackson overperformed over him. Uh, I know they traded away. God, what's his name? Freaking wide receiver. This would be a forever. He was a prick. Basically said it was freaking, oh, they should have bombed to, like, stay home. The bus marathon. Um, God damn, let me take forever. I'm trying to think of his name. So, they got rid of that one wide receiver that was the top wide receiver. I see his face, but I can't forget, I forget the name. But, you know, they did do pretty good in the draft. So, you know, I think the Bills are looking at a possible 8-8 eight eight season, maybe 7-9. You know, a team that's at 500, fairly under, so... They're not a horrible team, but it's just that they they still got some some inexperience with EJ Manuel and whatnot. So they move on to AFC North with the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals every single freaking year. Oh, we're gonna go make the playoffs and then lose in the first round. Like, seriously, am I the only one to get tired of this crap? Like seriously, I I don't care about the Bengals and I'm getting tired of this. Freaking Andy Dalton to me is he's a decent quarterback. I mean, I'm not gonna say he's like. Bad or he's good. I think he's an okay quarterback. Obviously, it helps when you got one of the best wide receivers in the game to me, and AJ Green. But what else do you have there for throwing wise, you know, for him? Ooh, Tyler Eifert, a mediocre tight end at best. Like, no, you got to be kidding me. So then you look at that, you know, you look at, and then you look at the running back. It's like, again, running back by committee. But Jarvis Green, Alice, uh, Giovanni Bernard, and freaking that other running back, I forgot who they drafted in this past. So, it's like, oh, uh, of course you got Geno Atkins, who's a very good defensive player, and the defense uh, is, you know, not too bad. But, you know, the Bengals, I mean, they got so much salary cap room. You look at this team, they got so much salary cap room, and they never make, you know, a big off-season acquisition, which just confuses me. Like, okay, it's one thing if you're a small market and you got, like, no money. But when you're a team that actually has quite a bit of cap room and you don't do squat with it, it's like, what the hell? You know, so then you got that. Then you got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously, you got, you know, Ben Roethlisberger and company. Um, you know, last year I was wondering what this wide receiver core would look like. Uh, they lost Emmanuel Sanders to the Denver, Denver Broncos. You know, recently him, you know, basically said, oh, well, well, when Peyton Manning throws the ball to me compared to Ben Roethlisberger, and apparently Antonio Brown's like, screw you. But, you know, Antonio Brown had a pretty good year last year. Keith Miller's getting older. Uh, so, I mean, this, this was a team where Jericho, Jericho Cottry was one of the best wide receivers on the team. I'm just sitting here going, oh. You know, they got, obviously, they got uh, they got Bell for the second straight year, and they acquired Gary and Blunt in the offseason. So, you know, I think the Steelers team will be better offensively. Defensively is another story, because, again, you guys got, like, Troy Palomalu and freaking Ryan Clark, who continues to get old. Like, good lord, this team is going to be here, like, the same defensive team basically going to be here until freaking 2020. Of course, I'm being kidding around. I'm not 100% serious when I'm saying that, to so take a joke. 
but really, this defense is getting older. How long can they work together? Because it's just, ugh. But nonetheless, I still think they're going to be somewhat competitive in the AFC North, despite me saying that. Now you look at Baltimore Ravens. Of course, we all know the Ravens' offseason has been total, total, to say the least. Of course, we all know about Ray Rice getting suspended for two games, which I find complete BS, along with other people. But that's another story. Um, you know, you look at this Ravens team. It's like, yeah, they added uh, Steve Smith. I'm going great. They got two old men wide receivers now, and Anquan Bolden and freaking Steve Smith. Of course, they have Torrey Smith, who is it Torrey Smith? Yeah, Torrey Smith that did. Uh, yeah, not not too bad last year. Had a pretty good, decent season. Um, but you know, and they also added freaking who did they have last year? Brown. I think Brown still there. So yeah, Joe Flacco is the perfect. I don't know. See, he's like. Joe Flacco reminds me in some way, sort of like Eli Manning, and before anyone freaks out, or you compare him to Eli Manning, what I mean by that is he's a mediocre quarterback in the regular season, but when you put him in the playoffs, it's a different story, you know? Just, some quarterbacks are like that, just like Joe Flacco. So, that's with that. And then you look at the defense, and, you know, their defense is, you know, all right. Um, yeah, I think the Ravens are one of, the, one of those teams that, Within the final week or two, they're either make or break in the playoffs. Things are going to be that close. But then you go on to the Baltimore, oh, not to Baltimore, excuse me, the Cleveland Browns, of course. Oh, they get Johnny Manziel, yay! Next day, Josh Gordon gets suspended, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh. I mean, I mean, I know they got out there, they got Ben Cade, of course, like I said, they got Johnny Manziel. And Brian Hoyer looked good for a couple games before he got injured last season. And that Cleveland Browns defense is not bad, you know, the offensive line is decent, it's not too bad either. Uh, you know, but the thing is, you know, Jordan Cameron, yes, is a talented tight end. I would love to have a Jordan Cameron on the Patriots. I mean, freaking, if, like, hypothetically speaking, if the Cleveland Browns were crazy enough to trade Jordan Cameron for the for Rob Kurkowski, I would do that in a heartbeat. Do it. Do it now. Freaking do it now. That's what I would say if I was, you know, let's just say the Browns were selling Jordan Cameron. I'm not saying they are, because they'd be really, really, really stupid if they did. But again, uh, the Browns, they have a good defense, obviously, Joe Hayden, you know, one of the better quarterbacks in the National Football League, but, and the Browns, this is going to be another year of the Browns, it's just, ugh. and look at the end, and now you move on to the AFC North South, at the Indianapolis Colts, don't forget about Andrew Luck, before I even go into, actually, do that, before I go back to the Colts, this division's going to suck, alright, the AFC South is going to be a joke, alright, you'll say, oh, the AFC East is a joke, I'm going to the Patriots, the AFC South is going to be garbage, okay? Minus the Colts, this division is going to be freaking garbage, all right? Look at the Colts. Yes, you got Andrew Luck. Yes, you got Kobe Fleener. Reggie Wayne's like, LOL, I could retire soon. And freaking, you know, you got that. But the thing is, this is the same thing that traded Trent Richardson for a first-round pick. How stupid are you? Like, and that defense is, ugh, but, you know... Andrew Luck being there, he's still going to win them games. And with a bad division, as I said, the Colts are going to win the division. So, plain and simple. Look at the Houston Texans. Oh, my God, are you guys stupid. Seriously, you guys drafted freaking, you know, another... I mean, you already have, like, J.J. Watt, and then you already have, you know, Clowney. Two, obviously, very good defensive players. But that's all you have on your team. And don't give me, oh, they have Arian Foster. Arian Foster is another guy that just can't stay healthy. Okay, it's plain and simple. Oh, wait, they got Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson's getting older, all right? And freaking, who the hell do they have else to do? And who's the quarterback? Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick is, is like, a, he's, he's not a game changer. He's more of a game manager, you know, per se. He's either a guy that just, he's either a guy that can control the game, you know, if, if his defense is helping up and, you know, if he has a good running back, he can control that, that kind of game. Other than that, nothing special for the Houston Texans. I mean, granted, they're probably going to win more than two games. I hope that God they win more than two games. You'd think they would. But, yeah, that team is going to blow. You know, the Tennessee Titans, you know, you still have that question mark over Jake Locker, very athletic, very talented quarterback. The guy, again, keeps getting injured, I swear. You know, I know a buddy of mine who's a big Titans fan. He was just around saying, I'm sure you guys heard on James Carter TV. Uh, you know, whenever, you know, get, uh, whenever Jake Walker gets injured, you know, it seems like, oh, he tripped over an ant. Oh, no, he's out for the season. You know what I mean? Like, it's something ridiculous happens to him if he gets injured. They lose Chris Johnson. 
you know, it's kind of like the Tennessee Titans with a reset button on the whole entire team, per se. You know, they got uh, Kendall, they got, you know, they got Wright, and, you know, they got Justin Hunter. So they got some good young wide receivers there for them. Uh, you look at the, the defense, it's, 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 but, you know, it's kind of like the Titans are in rebuilding mode right now, and it's just, you know, they're just going what they can right now. And you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, ooh. When you have Chad Henney be your starting quarterback as of right now, there's something wrong with that in my opinion. Yes, you get drafted play four. That's great. Justin Blackburn's a complete idiot for getting arrested again. And then you look at Cecile Shorts, uh, who's a pretty good wide receiver. But you look at everything else in the Jaguars, it's like, what else do you have? Like, really? I mean, their defense is... Mm, their offense is... Uh, so it's just, again, like I said, it's division, the division, division is going to be... Eh, let's, just, let's just do that. Guy. You look at the AFC West, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, who I honestly think are going to be a one-hit wonder. And what I mean by that is, obviously last year they shocked a lot of people, including myself, by making the playoffs. This year, I think they're going down, meaning, like, they're not making the playoffs. Because pretty much every team in the division, to me, is more of a threat. And I'm being dead serious when I'm saying that. Because I know they're going to say, oh, geez, oh, they won with their defense. Oh, Alex Smith was a game manager. I understand that. But, you know, obviously you got Jamal Charles, a very good running back. But let's face it, you take Jamal Charles, what else do they have? Dwayne Bow has game has just, like, went down anything. And then, you know, you just look at the rest of the team, and you just go, okay, yeah, you got Andy Reid, of course, just looking straight here as your head coach. But it's just, you know, Andy Reid's kind of like a coin flip, right? I mean, do you guys remember the last couple seasons in Philadelphia with Andy Reid? They were great, weren't they, Philly fans? Or just, no, Philadelphia Eagles fans. Then you go to the Denver Broncos. Let's face it, the winning division, Peyton Manning, LOL. Oh, we lose Eric Decker to the Jets. Now we're going to replace him with Emmanuel Sanders. We've still got Wes Welker. We've still got freaking Mary Thomas. And we have Julius Thomas. We might as well have been a man-made tight end for freaking Peyton Manning. No one ever freaking heard of him until Peyton Manning brought him into the league basically last year, even though he's been there for a second straight year. And they actually did get somewhat better on defense. So it's kind of like, yeah, screw the Broncos. But anyways, let's move on to the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> Um, Chargers, I mean, let's face it, the polar opposite of the Denver Broncos, not the Broncos, this is the polar opposite of the Dallas Cowboys. They love December. December is their wonderful month, right? December is literally a like Christmas month for them. They always seem to win in December. And the Chargers do have a lot of talent. You know, they have Keenan Allen. Um, I don't think they have Daniel Alexander anymore, which is weird because I know he got injured last year, but he's actually pretty good in the wide receiver. So must give him a chance. Patriots, do it. Um, you, you know, look at Philip Rivers, of course, pretty good quarterback. Ryan Matthews is an interesting thing to talk about because Ryan Matthews has talent, but with injuries and him, he has sometimes having a hard time holding on to the football. It's just a big question mark in itself. Uh, Antonio Gates is getting over. Hey, he's still there. Uh, and look at their defense. It's, it could be suspect at best at times, but you know, to me with the Chargers, they got a nice little team going there for them, so... You know, I'm, you know, I won't be surprised if the Chargers sneak their way to the playoffs in the UFC. So, we move on to the Oakland Raiders. You know, obviously, they say goodbye to Terrell Fryer. They say hello to Matt Schaub. So, now you got Matt Schaub as your quarterback, who, you know, came off basically starting for most of a 2-14 and season for the Houston Texans. Uh, and then you go on to, uh, you know, to get Darren McFadden, and then you go and get Maurice Jones Drew. So, you kind of got a 1-2 punch right there running back. Problem is, both guys have a big history of getting injured. So it's like, oh, Dan McFadden gets hit. Oh, Maurice Jones, true. Oh, he's hurt. Who's a third string running back? So it's just... And, you know, it's just... Okay, look at the Raiders. They look like a not a bad team, but in a tough division, and with them being the Raiders for so damn long, it's just... It's kind of hard to trust them. Per se. And plus, and apparently, there's a rumor, oh, they could go move to San Antonio. So, it's mean, J.D. Venom. There you go. Um... So that's what the AFC. Now, quickly, we go to the NFC again. I'm sorry this video is long, but you get the point. Philadelphia Eagles, NFC East. You know, I think the Eagles, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, the Eagles are going to win, the Eagles are going to win, the Eagles are going to win the division. I think they have a shot of winning it, but I still want to see more of Nick Foles, and a lot of people are like, oh, Nick Foles is a great quarterback. 
I don't know if you say he's a great quarterback. I think he's a, as of right now, he's a talented quarterback. But you got to see more. And then, you know, obviously with Deshaun Jackson being gone, you, you let Jeremy Macklin coming off of, uh, you know, ACL injury, and Brent Cooper, her parents are racist. And then you move on to Brent Selleck, who's a mediocre tight end at that. So it's like, okay, what does Nick Bull have here? I mean, yes, he has Dallas Sproles, who's a very good running back, especially, you know, using him in a halfback screen. But, you know, the defense, and then uh, Dallas Cowboys, oh my god, the Cowboys are going to suck. I'm sorry, Cowboys fans, but your team's got to suck. All right. Yes, you got Des Bryant. Yes, you got Tony Romo. Yes, you got Jason Lennon. Yes, you got DeMarco Murray. But, hey, yeah, yay. Really, your defense. What the hell did you guys do? You got worse, if anything. Your defense was even that good last year. That's the scary part. With the Redskins, obviously. You all know RG3 coming off of injury, but he had, does have a new uh, head coach, Mike Shanahan, gone, so that drama's done. Uh, for Morris, they added Deshaun Jackson, along with Pierre Garçon. I mean, in the defense, I feel it's gotten a bit better. So, with that being said, the Redskins honestly have a very good opportunity. If RG3 stays healthy, they have a very good opportunity, in my honest opinion, of winning the NFC East. Look at the New York Football Giants. Um... I mean, what can you say? You got Ruben Randall, you got Victor Cruz, you got Eli Manning and company. So, and you got Tom Coughlin there for like the 90th straight year. And of course, he gets sarcastic because the guy looks like he's freaking 105 years old. But that being said, uh, the New York Football Giants, they have a chance to make things interesting. I know last year was a complete, you know, flop from them. Last year was a complete horrible year. I feel that offensive line has gotten better. So I think that. You know, Eli Manning will be better in the pocket. He won't be as pressured as he usually is, you know, during kicks and whatnot, getting sacked left and right. So, I think it'll be a better year for the Giants. Will they win the NFC East? I don't know about that. We'll have to see. So, we're going to move on to the NFC North, to the Detroit Lions. The Lions are one of those teams that you look on paper and you think, okay, offensively, they're going to be a juggernaut. They have a great offensive team. Look at the defense. Ugh. And I'm just saying, what about Dagoni? What about Sue? You know, they got Sue. Sue can't do it by himself, right? Let's just be real with this, all right? And, and the Lions, again, like I said, they're just a perfect example of a team that's going to stink on defense but be a great team on offense. It's that simple. The Stubbers, uh, you know, they re-signed Jay Cutler. I know a lot of Bears fans aren't too happy about that. But hey, you got to live with it. You got Matt Forte. You got Graham Marshall. You got Alshon Jeffrey, who looked like a beast last year. And, you know, he did a great job for them. Um, I believe they have Martellus Bennett still. I believe they have Martellus Bennett. He did pretty good last year as well. And that defense, I mean, it's the Chicago Bear defense. So, you know, the Bears look like a very good team of contending with this falling team, the Green Bay Packers. Of course, everyone's saying Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is going to possibly beat Peyton Manning to win MVP. I hope so. Cause I'm sick and tired of seeing Peyton Manning win MVP. But for another story, Aaron Rodgers is just a man on a mission. You got Jordy Nelson. You got, you got, you got just Cobb. You got so much talent on the team for this you know, Green Bay Packers. And a lot of these, you know, names that I'm throwing out there, you know, for you know wide receivers or tight ends for the Packers, very good. Not only very good, very young. So they still have room to grow, and that's kind of scary once you think about it. And then you move on to the defensive side. Of course, we think, the first thing you think about the Packers on defense, of course, do they like them or not? Clay Matthews is right there. So, the Packers have a very good chance to win the NFC North. Minnesota Vikings, on the other hand, it's just the Adrian Peterson show. What else can you say? I know people are like, oh, what about, you know, Patterson? Or what about, you know, so and so? And I'm just sitting here going, I mean, yes, he did got get Teddy Bridgewater. And, you know, that's gonna, he's going to be a good guy for the future for them. And I think they're built pretty good for the future, just not right now. I mean, when you got, and I hope to God this was a joke. When Teddy Bridgewater said he started learning the play of the Vikings via Madden, that's a little scary, just saying, and not in a good way. So then we move on to the NFC South and the Orleans Saints. To the Saints, all right? When Drew Brees comes up saying that he feels as good as he was in his 20s and he's in his mid to late 30s, that's not a good sign if you're in the NFC South. Uh, <laughs> you know, they did lose Aaron Sproles, but nonetheless, they still got a very good team. And then... Back to the whole, you know, 
shenanigans that they did in the last couple of years. It's still a good team, so they're still a threat. It's going to be Buccaneers. But Lovey Smith is the head coach. I don't think they're going to be as bad as they were last year, obviously. Last year was just a nightmare for them. This year, I think they turned it around. I think they honestly have a realistic chance of possibly being, possibly being a 500 team. Other than that, maybe a few games under. Kind of like the Buffalo Bills kind of scenario for them. Uh, you look at the Carolina Panthers. Who the hell does Cam Newton have to bu- throw the ball to? Like, seriously. They have no one to throw the ball to. I know they drafted that one rookie wide receiver who I heard is okay. But who else do they have to go to? I mean, yes, they got Olsen as their tight end. That's all they're going to throw the ball to? Seriously, Cam? Uh, but with that being said, they still got a strong defense. Uh, their offensive line is not too shabby. No idea who's a running back. Again, running back by Kirk Committee, you know, but... Ugh. And then with the Atlanta Falcons, perfect example of a team that I think that will bounce back. Last year, again, Matty Ice and Matt Ryan, again, a nightmare season for them. You know, with Julio Jones and Roddy White and Steve Jackson and the defense, which is a complete other joke. But I think they're turning around this year. The defense looks a bit better. Uh, I think that offense will come back to life uh, next, next this upcoming season. So I think they'll have a very good chance of challenging the Saints in the NFC South, to be honest with you. And then, real quickly, the NFC West. To me, the best division in the NFL today. Uh, again, very talented team. This is a very talented division, excuse me. You know, every team that seems like in this division is scary defensively. So if your favorite team, if, you know, let's just say your AFC, I forget what the AFC South faces the NFC West this year. I could be wrong on that. But, you know, if your team is facing every team in the NFC West this year, I'm willing and pray to God that you guys win because this is scary. The Rams, if Sam Bradford stays healthy, again, a big if. You know, they could, I'm not going to say they're going to win the division. I'm not going to go crazy like that. But I'm saying they're going to be better than them like they were last year. Because their defense is pretty damn good. The 49ers, no, no, the 49ers, Kaepernick, um, you know, Crabtree. You know, this team is just really, you know, talented per se. And, you know, you know meaning that they're just really good, you know, all around. So, I think we all know, obviously, what they can do. Look at the Seattle Seahawks, the defending Super Bowl champion. Uh, I think they could, I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to win the division or go back to the Super Bowl because, you know, it's kind of hard for winning the Super Bowl and the media's going back. Um, I think they'll lose a few more games, especially at home. You know, we saw what the Arizona Cardinals did last year. They shocked the world. <gasps> they beat the Seahawks the off the game at home. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? So, I think they're going to fluster a little bit because, again, who in the world other than Percy Harvin, who's a big injury prone right there, is Russell Wilson going to throw the ball? I know they managed to get to Marshawn Lynch, who's holding out right now, by the way, in training camp. So, not looking that good for the Seahawks. But with that being said, they still got the best cornerback in the National Football League, Richard Sherman. And they got a very good defensive team. And they did get a little bit worse. You know, they lost a few key guys, but they're still a good team. And last but not least, the Arizona Cardinals. Of course, we just heard recently, I believe it was yesterday, Patrick Peterson got a nice big old payday. And, uh, you know, that defense is what it is. You know, pretty solid good. And, of course, you got Larry Fitzgerald. question is, will Boyd step up for the Arizona Cardinals? Well, how much does Carson Palmer have left in him? How improved is that offensive line? going to be for the Arizona Cardinals. Who knows, but we'll have to wait and see. That's it for me. I apologize for the video for being super long. I told you guys it was going to be a long video, so hope you guys enjoyed it. Later.